uh, com. Hi, Matt. He bought the really good. Hi, guys. Good morning. Is, is this the Howard Stern show? I mean, my gosh, that language. My little ears are burning. Morning. What, you just realized that you can swear on this show? I, I mean, I guess I did, but Howie, like, man, Howie's an, a pretty intense guy. He kisses his mom with that mouth. Jeez. Well, you know, he is a uh, Browns fan in the middle of Steelers territory. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I guess apparently the Browns and Steelers played yesterday. Did you know that? Yeah, that was uh, – that was – it was so anticlimactic because all the Steelers were worried about was what was going on in Buffalo. And even upstairs in the press box, Burt Lawton, the Steelers PR director, had to keep switching back and forth between the, the game that was on in front of us and the Buffalo Jets game, which, again, held just as much importance to the Steelers. And, you know, Steelers themselves lackadaisically just kind of went through the, at least the first three quarters and then finally were able to put this thing away yesterday. And then, of course, after the game, it was all about – how did Buffalo win? What happened? And then, of course, will Pittsburgh play on Sunday or Saturday? So there was a lot of drama outside that game yesterday. But I think everybody kind of knew that as long as Pittsburgh did what they should, they should have been able to win that game. And, they, and they eventually they finally did. Hey, I'm just curious, uh, your thoughts on if Pittsburgh can do any damage in the playoffs? You know, I don't know. I, you know, their first-round matchup, I, I do like if, if you're a Steelers fan. I think Cincinnati is great for the Pickens. Um, you know, they lost to Denver to go in a game they should have won. I don't know how much faith I have in A.J. McCarron. You know, but with that being said, if the Steelers think they can just show up and go through a first half like yesterday, a first half like Baltimore, they're going to get beat. You know, this isn't the same Bengals team they played a couple weeks ago because the Bengals are going to be ready this time around, and the Steelers are going to be a little bit banged up. You don't know what's going to be with D'Angelo Williams and that ankle sprain, if he's going to be able to go. And the comedy stylings of Toussaint and Todman at the running back spot, I don't know if I trust that. So, And Ben Roethlisberger just has not looked very good the last couple weeks. You know, he looked great in the second half against Denver, but really has not looked all that good, especially last week against Baltimore. And I didn't think he looked that good yesterday. I know he threw for a lot of yards and threw for a bunch of touchdowns, but, uh, you know, made some bad mistakes, threw some bad interceptions. If they go to Cincinnati and get into a fight, and make it about what goes on off the field, what goes on Twitter this week. They're gonna they're gonna lose that game. I, I just think Cincinnati is due for a playoff win. On the other hand, if they can focus in and go down and play a much better offensive game and, and find a way defensively to tackle better, I think they have a pretty good shot. Now after that, Denver and New England stands in their way. I think both those teams with their passing games is gonna be awfully, awfully tough to beat as far as from the Steelers point of view. All right, Matt, uh, let me put you through the Browns gauntlet here real quick. Uh, just your thoughts, uh, Ray Farmer, fired, right call, or wrong call? No, I mean, I think all, all of them had to go. I think Ray, uh, you know, the suspension put a dark cloud over the entire season. Uh, I don't think personnel-wise Mike Pett was given a lot of options. I know a lot of people are talking about why didn't Mike play Dwayne Bow? Why didn't Justin Gilbert get more playing time? How about that these guys just aren't that good? I mean, has anybody ever thought about that? Maybe these guys just aren't that good. So, yeah, I think Ray absolutely had to go. Uh, Justin Gilbert, I think there are way more issues than we ever, ever, ever will. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, just all kinds of stuff. Uh, last thing, and I, I think it's interesting because I kept looking at it from a Steelers perspective. Would the Steelers ever put up with what Johnny Manziel has dished out? No. And the answer to me was no. Time no. Time again, I, mean, I, I, mean, let's, I mean, Andy, they dumped a third-round draft choice in Dre Archer uh, for off-the-field issues. Chris Rainey got dropped for off-the-field issues. I mean, you know, every NFL team has to put up with some modicum of off-the-field problems. It's just the, the state of the NFL. But the amount of things that this guy has put the Browns through in the last just month has just been incredible uh, to the point where there's no way, nobody is more important than the team. I don't care on any NFL franchise. And why the Browns have continued to give this guy a free pass. And now the report that I not heard even 20 minutes ago that this guy showed up for, for practice intoxicated one day. I, I mean, it is enough is enough. This guy has no respect for the organization, no respect for the team, no respect for his teammates. He's a spoiled brat. That's all I can say about him. I would, I, If I was a team owner, if I was a coach, I wouldn't want anything to do with this kid. Gotcha. Matt Lodi, thank you very much. Steelers, Gab, we always appreciate your time. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a great day, guys. Take care. All right. Hey, Andy, uh, let yeah. me interject something uh, about the Steelers organization. Sure, ben right. Roethlisberger had some off-the-field issues right. uh, in, on two separate occasions and also was in a motorcycle accident, and they kept him around. So so they did, uh, you know, go the extra mile or two with Ben Roethlisberger, gave him a couple of chances. 
with all the other guys, Plaxico Burris, too. Uh, they dumped those guys rather quickly. I, uh, let's, uh, let's talk about that for a second. How close was Ben Roethlisberger to being said goodbye? Lodi, I know you're still there. Hang on if you can hear me. Yeah, I, I mean, I know that was the rumor evidently back then, Andy, was that they were talking to St. Louis about trade options for that first pick. That was the Sam Bradford year. I remember that, and I'm sure you do, Kenny, as well. I, I don't necessarily think it got to a point of, you know, on the cusp. I think there were some discussions, and, you know, Ben Roethlisberger to this day, I think probably regrets all of the things that took place. Um, obviously, I mean, I think I think now he's stayed out of trouble. He's a team leader. He's turned it around. But, That's you know, the thing about Ben Roethlisberger, obviously very different than Johnny Manziel, is Ben Roethlisberger already had one Super Bowl ring when all these allegations went down and I think was on the verge of a second. So he was an established quarterback, uh, you know, and I don't think the Steelers were, were that close to getting rid of him. Kenny, I mean, I know you could jump on this and, and kind of agree with you were right there. You saw What this. I was told was he had two strikes against him and one more right. they would have considered getting rid of him. And that's when he turned his life around. He ended up getting married. Uh, he was never convicted of the allegations that were uh, against him. So uh, you, you, know, you remember the movie Stripes where, where they go in to sign up for the Army and the uh, Recruiter says, have you ever been convicted of a crime and they've convicted? No, never convicted. So, um, and so he was, he was close, and he turned it around, and he's been, uh, you know, their quarterback since, and he's beaten the Browns, what, 21 times now or whatever it is in his career. All right, Matt, thank you. We'll, we'll talk to Matt later. Uh, Kenny, let's just go through final thoughts and okay. plugs. Um, uh, unless you want to hop in. Real quick, I want to uh, – Pierre real. brought up this picture a little earlier. Okay. Um, Uh, it's a, a picture of uh, Brian Hoyer and uh, Brandon Whedon. I'm what are your thoughts Brian. on that? I, you know, I, I don't know too. if you go back and look. I uh, 92.3 The Fan. They asked me I didn't, what I teams are going to make the playoffs, and I said, "Yeah, I mean, look, I know they're not in a strong conference, but and I know Indianapolis had a bad year. I said the Texans would make the playoffs with Brian Hoyer, and you know, I know he didn't play the last couple of weeks, but." Is that Ray Farmer's biggest mistake, not bringing him back, or do you think it would have not? No, it uh, didn't matter because Brian wasn't. Brian wasn't. Brian was battling Johnny Manziel, and what was Johnny Manziel? And it's an undrafted quarterback against a guy you picked in the first round. It, it, it just, it. Some of the things just didn't matter because we were so clouded in the way we were looking at the, at everything, and it split Browns fans in half. I hate that. I, I mean, it drives me nuts. I'm happy for Brian. He went to go play, and I said it a hundred times on this show alone. He was going to play for Bill O'Brien. When it became exactly. evident that it wasn't working, I said it time and time again. And now he and Bill, and he had to fight his way to keep this job. You know, Ryan Mallett had him uh, on the edge of, of saying, you're done. You know, we're going to go with Mallett. So I give Brian a lot of credit. And I mean, as a Clevelander, I'm proud of him. Do yeah. I wish the Browns were there more than uh, the Texans? Yeah, I do. But I'm happy for him. Our division, week in and week out, is one of the toughest divisions, and it's going to be hard when you get a quarterback like a Johnny Menzel who doesn't want to really buy into the Browns way, the tradition that we have here. And when you got a guy like Brian Hoyer who knows about Cleveland and things like that, Johnny want to be in Dallas. Set his ass to Dallas. Bye. See? Uh, what are you going to get for him, though, now? That's the problem. I don't I mean, think, you're not, not going to get none. Just he crushed him. you even on more trade value problems. Just, just cut him. Things. You're not going to get anything. And hopefully Jerry Jones – will be smart enough not to pick him up. And nobody's, in my personal opinion, you know what I'm saying, you want to be a – Out of the league two years? Is that what you th thought? If, if he continues at this rate, out of the league two we, years. You know what? Nobody want to get Tim Tebow a chance. No, yeah, that's true. You know what I'm saying? But you get this kid a chance and he keeps shitting on you like this, man, get rid of him. Bye. Uh, Kenny. As far as uh, Hoyer, congratulations to Brian. You know, exactly. good for him. But I look at him more as a career backup. Uh, he's in a good situation with a guy that he had in New England. Right. And uh, in this division, a lot different than the division that they played in. Uh, I, I don't think Brian Hoyer may, would have made much of a difference with this team uh, this year. But kudos right. to him. Brandon Wheaton, come on, we all wanted him out of town as well. Uh, it's just ironic that they're both on the same team. And uh, their team won a division with, what, a 500 record? So that, that they'll be one and done, in my opinion. I think they'll lose to Kansas City. And those guys want to play for Houston, though. I know that. No, I mean, yeah, they do. Uh, well, wouldn't you want to play anywhere but Cleveland? <laughs> I, I'd want to play on a team with J.J. Watt in True. a minute. Big, big talent talent war war. helps, too, right? Yes. They didn't make it. Look, I mean, Bill O'Brien, they were talking about he was fired five weeks ago. Yeah. Everybody said he yep. was out, out, out. So, uh, why don't you give me a couple plugs here? Go ahead. Well, as you can imagine, we're going to be talking about this today on the Kenny Rota Show, News Talk 1480 WHPC, 
three to six or seven today and throughout the entire week, throughout this uh, search process for hopefully a coach who has won a Super Bowl already or at least taken a team to the Super Bowl. If this plan that Jimmy Haslam has put in place is going to work, uh, they need a coach who's done that, who's at least taken a team to the Super Bowl, no uh, knows what it takes to get a team there, uh, preferably a coach that's won a Super Bowl. But uh, in order for that to happen, you're going to have to overpay this guy and give him a, a lot of power, even though he may not have the title. So this is going to be very interesting. And this is, what, the third head coach for, for Jimmy Haslam now oh, yeah. and third general manager or whoever that is going to be, whatever his title really is. Uh, Jimmy Haslam, to me, is the biggest problem with the Cleveland Browns. He said yesterday he takes most of the blame for this, and he should. He's been a horrific owner to this point. All right, Kenny, thank you. We'll listen for you, and uh, we'll probably, I'm sure we're going to have a couple shows up here that are not scheduled right now, but uh, I will talk to you soon. Kenny, All right, you, sounds oh, good. Hey, Pierre, congrats on Michigan representing the Big Ten. Well, yeah, we, by the way, I'm gonna th I want to thank you. And I said this on the air the other night. If it wasn't for the Big Two, Little 12, I, yeah. I would have been so embarrassed by the Big Ten again. I mean, you talk about embar at Northwestern, embarrassing. Iowa, Iowa. embarrassing. Ooh. Michigan I, State. Michigan State, Man, embarrassing. That was Horrific so thank you. I, I thank you. Oh, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. You know, I think Ohio State, Michigan, you know, the only two that won. So we, we know what's, what's going to happen. Kenny, we'll talk to you soon. Uh, Pierre, final thought. Uh, final thought. The Browns need to wake up. I mean, and hopefully we can get a Sean Payton or we can bring in Brian Billick, um, somebody that has won Super Bowls, like Kenny said. Brian Billick's not coming here if he can't control the roster. Well, that's something that they need to re relinquish. They need to let that go and let this man control the roster. I mean, he's a coach. That's what he does. Yeah, I hear you. All right, well, thank you. Eric, the referee, anything? I just can't wait for the draft. I mean, we locked up the second uh, pick overall. Uh, can, can we actually do something with it? Um, yeah, we'll are, trade it. We're, we're yeah, are we going to trade it? Are we actually going to take a quarterback uh, second no. overall? No. Uh, there's going to be a lot of discussion. You know uh, who I'll take second overall right now? Ezekiel Elliott. <laughs> I'm serious. I hey, I nothing wrong with Ezekiel I Elliott. I, um, Elliott but I, I don't see the Browns else. doing that though. They would. Trent. I have a choice. Got a big choice. What, what about? Choice? I'm not coming. He can pull that up. Who was that? Who was Eli that? Manning. Yeah, Manning. Yeah. How about Joey Bosa at number two overall? Would you be happy with that? Because that's yeah, that's right know. now who the scouts have us taking. Uh, in, I. In six mock drafts, four of them they had. So who's going uh, to overall? That's offensive the, lineman. Offensive lineman from uh, Old Miss. Yeah, well, Dan, we need to get an offensive uh, lineman too. The, I, I want to get off the air. I'm tired of this. Paula, thank you. Uh, oh, I didn't realize Paula's not. Lisa, Lisa. Lisa's here now. Lisa, thank you for filling in here at the end. Tell Paula we said thank you too. We appreciate it. Happy New Year. Thank Happy New Year to everybody. Stop um, the violence <laughs> in Cleveland. Well, uh, I just want to thank everybody for joining us again on another great year. I think of Dogs on the Run, um, and, and more than that, now that. Uh, We've got the podcast available that you can watch us at any point. So uh, thank you to everybody that's been a part of the show this year uh, and looking forward to maybe doing a couple special shows coming up here down the road. So thank you. That's Dogs on the Run. We'll see you later. God bless.